Before we get into today's edition of Just the Truth, Mike Lindell sent me a note yesterday. He has a special for the six-piece towel set, 25 bucks when you use promo code JOEY. Just go to MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY. You'll get the $25 offer on the six-piece towel set, and I promise you, these will be the most comfortable, the most absorbent towels that you own. MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY. Get the six-piece towel set for just $25. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time. Visit MyPhDWeightLoss.com. Joe Biden heads to Chicago for what is being called a hero's goodbye. The Democrat National Convention kicks off Monday night, and the president will speak and then leave town and head to California for a vacation, we're told. Meanwhile, pro-Palestinian activists are prepping for massive demonstrations at the DNC after initially pausing their plans. But once it became evident that Kamala Harris would be the Democrat nominee, they have decided to pursue the demonstrations we're it's being reported that there will be massive demonstrations at multiple points throughout the city of chicago more details on that too resounding calls for vice president kamala harris to conduct press interviews are mounting after the democrat presidential nominee unveiled her economic plan on friday just days before the party will convene in chicago details on that as it appears her own some of in, in her own party are turning against her. What role does religious affiliation play in how people will vote in November? The Pew Research Organization has results on an extensive research project, and the results are quite interesting. I'll go over those with you as well. Elon Musk says he's closing down his social media giant, X, formerly known as Twitter, in Brazil after threats from a Brazilian judge to find the company for distributing what the court considers misinformation. <laughs> I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills, <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. This is not exactly the Democrat convention that President Joe Biden had envisioned just a month ago. It's still pretty amazing how quickly things have changed for the Democrat Party. Uh, Stepping onto the stage in Chicago was supposed to be what some were were calling the capstone of a half a century of electoral uh, politics by Joe Biden, a man who spent 40-plus years in the United States Senate. This was supposed to be a triumphant recognition of his what he considered a hugely successful first term in office and uh, a hard-earned validation of the belief that he alone could once again defeat Donald J. Trump. But a week that Biden once saw as his political pinnacle is now just going to be overtaken by Kamala Harris and the more radical side of the Democrat Party. Uh, Politico wrote, the deafening roars Biden receives at the United Center Monday night will communicate just as much relief as reverence from a party grateful he stepped away, further signaling that Biden's exit from the race is only the only reason Democrats are confident they ha- now have a shot in November. And when Vice President Kamala Harris delivers her acceptance speech later in the week, Biden will be vacationing. He'll be far away from Chicago uh, and not part of of this celebration. Now, I'm not a big fan of Joe Biden's. I don't hold the contempt of Joe Biden that some might. I think he's just a lonely uh, old man who stayed in his position much longer than he should have. Joe Biden should have retired long ago. Joe Biden should have never run for president. Now, the Democrat Party realized what a liability he is, and they've kicked him to the curb. That has to be a bad feeling for a man who literally has given his life to the Democrat Party for them to turn on him as quickly as they did. It has to be tough to know that some of your longtime allies, like Speaker Nancy Pelosi, were played a big role in talking behind your back and literally stabbing you in the back 
And now they want to come together and create this party of unity. Representative Debbie Dingell, a Democrat from Michigan, said uh, he's going to get an incredible reception. Now, now she's a big Biden ally. Uh, she says, I'm sure it's going to be that it's very complicated, and I know that he's probably somewhat sad. I would say he's somewhat sad if, if you've been kicked out of your own party. This revamped convention now is set to dominate the political landscape for the next uh, four days. Uh, we're told that it's going to mirror the shifting dynamics of a Democrat party trying to celebrate Biden's tenure while at the same time moving on. And that's where Kamala Harris has to kind of toe the line to a, to a degree. She's already showing signs of breaking out because you have to understand that she's, of, of course, been part of the Biden-Harris administration. And that's our duty as Republicans. And that's what I'm just praying Donald Trump takes advantage of and keeps reminding the American people that it has been the Biden-Harris administration. Harris, as in an equal partner. This uh, this week's programming, though, at the Democrat National Convention, I suspect that you're going to see a, a Kamala Harris that you really don't recognize because they're going to try to reinvent her, and there's already signs that they're going to try to put some space between Harris and Biden. Now, if I'm Joe Biden and I'm sitting there and I'm listening to this, it's almost as if she's critical of what she has supposedly helped him do, but yet she knows what a miserable failure the administration has been. So how do you go out and you convince the American people that because you can't afford to buy groceries anymore, or they can't afford to buy groceries anymore, uh, because it's tough to to fill your your car completely full, so you you only fill it a half at a time because you're paying three, four, five dollars a gallon of gas. Uh, it's hard for her to convince you, like Joe Biden has been uh, traveling the country in these past couple of months, talking about what a success Bidenomics is. Kamala Harris, I think, is smart enough. To understand, Bidenomics has been a disaster for most Americans. Uh, Politico says that officials want the, the opening night of the DNC to, quote, remind Americans of the reeling pandemic plagued nation that Biden inherited three and a half years ago and the progress he made while charting the U.S. out of a confluence of crisis. They go on to say, from restoring relationships abroad to curbing unauthorized border crossings, crime at home while executing on a sweeping economic agenda. The problem is they haven't done any of that. Let's break that down. When they, when they talk about restoring relationships abroad, what relationships has Joe Biden restored? He, he's sent billions to Ukraine. But do you think anybody really respects the United States more because of Joe Biden? And then they talk about curbing unauthorized border crossings. We've had record numbers of border crossings under the Biden-Harris administration. What could they possibly be talking about when they say that they're going to remind Americans about the Biden-Harris administration curbing unauthorized border crossing? It just didn't happen. It's not there. And then they talk about, well, we're going to, Remind Americans about the sweeping, sweeping economic agenda. Well, again, I don't think the Americans are going to buy it. We're told that Biden's speech, will, uh, which is still undergoing revisions over the weekend, uh, according to Politico, but it's going to feature uh, the accomplishments that aides have often favorably compared to the legacy of former President Lyndon B. Johnson. Biden and his senior advisors have fixated on the finishing touches uh, because this is it. This is this is the the finishing touches to his career. Joe Biden, yes, he'll still be president. He's a lame duck president already. He'll still be president until Donald Trump hopefully is sworn in in January. But this is this is his final big speech. Biden uh, we're told is expected to deliver a stark warning about the dangers of another Trump term to make a forceful case for his vice president promoting Harris as an indispensable governing partner 
who's ready to take over. Now, see, that's where this is a real balance. Because I suspect that Kamala Harris doesn't want Joe Biden making too strong of a case that she's been a an indispensable governing partner, as described by Politico. Because Harris wants to wants the appearance that she's been kind of alone out there, that she hasn't been totally part and doesn't totally agree with what Joe Biden has done. First Lady Jill Biden is also expected to address the convention on Monday night. Uh, There's little doubt among his close aides and allies that Biden is entering the week with mixed feelings, according to a number of people that Politico interviewed, saying that this is a very hard time for Joe Biden, as I can imagine. I'll be watching the DNC for you if you don't want to. Be interesting to know, are you planning to watch the DNC this week? Send me a quick text. Email me, joey at joeyhudson.com. Soon going to be four years ago that I started my journey with Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition. I lost 30 pounds. Pretty quickly, I might add, and I've been able to maintain that for almost four years now. It'll be four years coming up in July. If this is the year that you have decided that you're going to get healthy, that you're going to lose that weight, that visceral fat that's so uh, damaging around your your waist, then now's the time to start. Let me encourage you to make that call today, 864-252-4925. Set up your initial consultation with PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition. Boy, am I glad that I met Dr. Ashley Lucas uh, four years ago and that she got me on the right path to getting healthy. You're going to be able to do things that you may have thought you'd never be able to do again. Uh, play with the kids, the grandkids, be able to to hike and, and walk and uh, maybe play a full 18-round uh, hole of golf and be able to do it and not get so winded. Because when you take that excess weight off, you're just going to feel better. You're going to be able to focus. You're going to be able to sleep better. Your overall health is just going to be improved. 864-252-4925. Call, set up your initial consultation. Find them online at myphdweightloss.com. PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. There was a moment after Vice President Kamala Harris was tapped to run for president when pro-Palestinian activists who were preparing for massive demonstrations at the Democrat National Convention Pause to rethink their approach. Not quite sure if they would protest against the vice president as they were planning to protest against Joe Biden. Now, the main organization who was trying to to bring these 200 plus groups together, uh, March on DNC 2024 is, is their name, met for about a half an hour the day Harris announced her candidacy. Now, this is per a report from Fox News. The meeting was to consider whether to move forward with the same confrontational approach that they had aimed at President Joe Biden, who they had dubbed Genocide Joe for his policies on Israel. Vice President Harris, despite being part of the Biden administration, was seen by some as being a little more sympathetic to the pro-Palestinian cause because she has been. She's hedged her bets. She's not as strong of a supporter of Israel that Joe Biden is, or at least she's not communicating that. So, uh, and, and by the way, too, you have to remember that Harris has made a forceful case and has mentioned many times that she feels like that a ceasefire deal is inevitable or, or could be reached if Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu would be a, a little more open to it. Uh, Atim Abudayaya, chair of the U.S. Palestinian Community Network, said, We all came to a consensus that it's not going to make a difference that Harris represents this administration. We're going to go full steam ahead. So, like everybody else in the country who knows that Kamala Harris is a major part of the Biden administration, this group of protesters, pro-Palestinian protesters, are doing just that full steam ahead and we're going to see a lot of that this week much more so than anything we saw or did not see actually in milwaukee at the republican national convention i never even saw a protester in milwaukee now i saw local news reports of some protesters uh way outside of the perimeter but nothing like 
some of the uh, some of the media wanted you to think was going to happen leading up to it. And maybe this is the same thing that will happen in Chicago. But you aren't going to convince the downtown Chicago businesses of that because uh, over the weekend, several local media outlets reported Chicago businesses in the area of the DNC had already boarded up their their front doors and their windows because of the expected protest. Now, I didn't see a single business in Milwaukee boarded up. I don't think anyone in Milwaukee thought that the Republicans were going to come there or anyone associated with the, Re- the Republican National Convention would come there and do damage to their property. Totally different scenario in Chicago. Scott Shapiro is owner of Sid Jerome. He told Fox News as he was boarding up his business, we have experience with this, and the city doesn't have a great track record with protecting their businesses or their citizens' property. So we want to be preemptive and board up in advance of the Democrat convention. Authorities have set up fencing around the United Center. That's where the Democrats will convene this week at the United Center uh, and McCormick Place next door to it. Uh, And just like at the RNC, they have a fenced-in perimeter area of several blocks around the United Center. More than a half dozen protests are expected throughout the convention week, according to Fox reports. Uh, It's anticipated that there'll be about 50,000 attendees at the DNC, including delegates, guests, and about 15,000 members of the media. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker said approximately 150 Illinois National Guard members are on standby in Chicago in in case protests get out of hand. Vicki Victor, owner of Chicago Board Up Services, said within the past two weeks, everyone's getting a little nervous, so they've started calling on her company to do pre-boarding to protect their businesses. Victor said that business owners are not all nervous, but are just doing this as more of a preventive measure. But again, I got to I got to make the observation. We didn't see this in Milwaukee. So businesses in Milwaukee evidently were not fearful that the Republicans were coming into town or that even demonstrators would come into town against the Republicans and do damage to their property. Uh, Chicago police superintendent Larry Snelling over the weekend at a news conference, uh, said that they had a police training session ahead of the Democrat National Convention. Over 300 police officers from Illinois and Milwaukee were deputized as Chicago police officers for, for, the, uh, for the week. Police said that the additional officers were assisting with security, allowing the Chicago Police Department to focus on patrolling neighborhoods citywide. The Chicago Police wrote on a Uh, post on X, ensuring our officers have everything they need to do their job safely and successfully is paramount. Superintendent Larry Snelling met with officers and recruits today to thank them for all that they're doing. As of Sunday, the Chicago Tribune reported at least seven large demonstrations on issues ranging from abortion rights to so-called economic injustices have been sanctioned by city officials. So they've already, already issued the permits that will allow these. Thousands of anti-Israel protesters from around the country are expected to rally in Chicago during the uh, week, and those are the ones that authorities are fearful will get out of hand. Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson said all protesters are welcome, so I guess they're a sanctuary city for protesters in addition to illegal immigrants, huh? Uh, Johnson said they don't have to be concerned about their First Amendment right. I'm going to make sure that these individuals have everything they need to make sure their voices are heard. Now, only a radical leftist mayor would say that. I mean, he's he's literally inviting them to come to his city to protest and to cause damage because that's what they'll do. Now, this is where they're all not on the same page, though, because police superintendent Snelling said, we will not allow people to come here and destroy the city. Uh, Snelling vowed that authorities would intervene if protests spin out of control. So maybe the police superintendent and the mayor aren't talking? I I don't know. You think there's going to be a a lot more protesting, more violent protests than what we saw at the RNC? Is that just because that's how Democrats are? Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. 
send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, Joey, at joeyhudson.com. Whether you're replacing a broken appliance or maybe you're just upgrading, you're totally remodeling the kitchen. When it's time to get those new appliances, when you're ready for them, you don't want to have to wait weeks or even months to get started using them, right? Well, that's not the case when you shop with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. With over 11,000 square feet and 1,500 appliances at any, any given time, you can buy today and use today quite often. I'm talking about shopping with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse in Pickens. It's worth the short drive over to Pickens. Jeff, Johnny, Kyle, the whole team over there, they'll take good care of you. They have an award-winning service department, expert installation, extended warranties, and a discounted appliance warehouse. They treat you like family. You're more than just a credit card swipe to all the team over there. Discounted appliance warehouse. They're proud to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with manufacturer's warranties that cover parts and labor. You owe it to yourself if you're looking for a new appliance to head over to Pickens to Discounted Appliance Warehouse online at dawpickens.com, dawpickens.com. The editorial board of the Washington Post was uh, a bit critical of Vice President Kamala Harris's economic policy that she rolled out on Friday. Did, did you have a chance to listen to any of the Vice President's speech uh, with, with this major announcement of hers on what her economic policy will look like? She delivered a speech Friday uh, with the idea that she would be addressing economic concerns of American voters. But her approach uh, drew some criticism for lacking substantive plans and relying on populist rhetoric, according to the Washington Post, of all people, (laughs) of all organizations. The editorial board stated, amid continuing frustration over high cost of living, Harris chose to focus on corporate malpractices and ban price gouging rather than provide a detailed economic strategy. The editorial board also claimed Harris squandered the moment on populist gimmicks. And this whole idea that she can control prices... That is a populist gimmick. We do not want Kamala Harris nor Donald Trump. We don't want anybody trying to control prices. Let the market do that. Get out of the market's way. Control uh, government spending so that we don't have continued inflation, and the market will take care of the prices. But when you start price fixing, we've seen this, and it doesn't look pretty. We saw it back in the 70s. When uh, under President Richard Nixon, a Republican, and and the editorial board reviewed some of these uh, these pitfalls of Harris's approach, drawing parallels to the ineffective price controls that we saw in the seventies under Nixon. This aspect of her economic plan, particularly targeting sectors with traditionally low profit margins like grocery stores, has been met with skepticism regarding its feasibility and impact, it will not work, folks. What it will potentially do is cost jobs. It will potentially put some businesses out of of business. And then we're going to have a whole other set of, 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 of problems on our hands. So kudos to the Washington Post. I don't always have a lot of positive things to say about the Washington Post, but kudos to them for standing up and calling the vice president out. The editorial board did offer praise of some of Harris's economic plans. Uh, when discussing housing, Harris proposed building 3 million new homes to address the real estate shortage, driving up prices, in addition to tax incentives to facilitate growth. Her plan includes a $25,000 down payment assistance for first-time home buyers, which could, according to the Washington Post, inadvertently inflate prices by increasing demand without corresponding supply adjustments. And they're right. Again, it's a gimmick. And offering $25,000, and we talked about this some on Friday. Many of you uh, text me and email me about this. We don't need the government interfering in our economy like this. Do the things government can do. And again, that's, let's get the interest rates down. Let's stop spending uh, some of these crazy amounts like in the programs like the Inflation Reduction Act that had nothing to do with redu- uh, reducing the inflation. Stop dumping trillions of dollars into the economy. Inflation will come down. The market will take care of itself. We've seen it over and over again 
in previous decades. Another focus of her economic strategy, if you want to call it that, involves enhancing the child tax credit, extending tax breaks for health insurance, Affordable Care Act. We've seen all this. Harris claims that her plan would not raise taxes on households, earning less than $400,000 annually, despite the potential $1.7 trillion addition to the national debt projected over two years, and the Washington Post called this out, as they should. As they should. The Washington Post editorial board added to its criticisms that every campaign wants to make expensive comments. They wrote, even adjusted for the pandering standards of campaign economics, however, Ms. Harris's speech Friday ranks as a disappointment. And yes, it was. Yes, it was. Uh, by the way, she continues to be on the hot seat for not being accessible to the press. And the, the, the rallying call for Kamala Harris to start doing some interviews and to start having some press conferences are starting to come from some of her very own friends within the the liberal media. Resounding calls, as Fox News uh, said in their uh, in in their headline, resounding calls for Vice President Kamala Harris to conduct press interviews are mounting after the Democrat presidential nominee unveiled her economic plan days before heading to her party's national convention in Chicago. Tim Murtaugh, senior advisor to the Trump campaign, told Fox News that Harris is running the most deceitful campaign in history as she hides from the American people. Murtaugh added that Harris is following President Biden's lead-in, lead avoiding the media. He said while she hides from the American people like Joe Biden always does, she's pretending to hold the opposite position on everything she's ever stood for as a San Francisco liberal. This is... Uh, what, 28, 29, 28 days, I think it is, without giving a formal interview or holding a press conference since Biden dropped out of the race. And we're not going to see, see her do anything this week either. I mean, even CNN's Jim Acosta was heard pressing Harris campaign spokesperson this past week on why she had avoided doing a press conference. Harris's communications director, Michael Tyler, said that she and her running mate, Tim Waltz, had been busy traveling across the country and conducting campaign rallies. Well, that's part of campaigning, is having a news conference. I understand they've been busy going to rallies, but, you know, the idea is you do like Donald Trump. You have a press conference prior to the rally. It's real simple. Uh, Mr. Tyler assured Acosta that Harris would be sitting down for an interview by the end of the month, which is what she had said earlier uh, as well. Last week, Harris announced that as president, she would institute a federal price-fixing plan on food and groceries in an attempt to stop big corporations from taking advantage of consumers. That, uh, that program has been dubbed Kamala-nomics, like Bidenomics, but Kamala-nomics. Many on social media over the weekend took her to task on this. Again, citing the idea you can't, you can't control this by artificially propping up segments of the economy. You can't tell a private business what they can charge for a product or a service. It's not how our economy works. But... She wouldn't know that. Kamala Harris wouldn't know that because Kamala Harris, all she, all she's ever been able to do as, as a elected official in California, and now as the last three and a half years as Biden's vice president, all she knows to do is spend tax dollars, throw tax dollars at it, pay off, pay off other people's debts, forgive student loans, and in this latest proposal. Again, give away twenty five grand for first time homeowners to people who probably don't even shouldn't even be buying a home, but let's give them twenty five grand so they can go out there and buy one and then get it foreclosed on. Kamala Harris will wreck this economy if if we allow her to win in November. That's why we have to work hard. We have to we have to start this week 
as and just expect a slight little bump. She's going to get a bump in the polls this week, so don't panic. Expect that. And we're, let's just kind of lie low and listen this week and be ready to full speed ahead next Saturday at the Lake Kiwi Trump Boat Parade. We're going to kick off the defeat to Kamala Harris uh, right here in South Carolina. We're going to show the country uh, how to do a Trump parade and how to unite around President Trump to elect him in November. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, Joey, at joeyhudson.com. Speaking of the Furman Ford text line, you know, it's never been more important to support locally run businesses owned by people who actually live here in the upstate. Let me take a minute to talk with you about our friends at Furman Ford. If you're looking for a new vehicle, maybe a great pre-owned vehicle, one you can you can trust, or maybe you're looking to order that special vehicle. Uh, either way, if you want a new one, a brand new one, or a pre-owned that you can trust, the, the folks at Furman Ford, they're there to help you. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line because every single tra- transaction is important to them. Jim Furman, Matthew Furman. They do business the right way. When you uh, stop by, when you give them a call, or maybe when you just uh, send them a quick email, you're always going to have access to a member of the Furman Ford family. And by the way, they also offer great service, and you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks to get it done. And you do not have had to purchase your vehicle at Furman Ford. doesn't even have to be a Ford. They, they service all makes and models. Visit my friends at Furman Ford online at FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. So according to Pew Research, one of their latest deep dives into what role religious affiliation plays in how people vote in elections, the relationship between partisanship and that voter's religious affiliation is a very strong relationship. I'll share with you uh, those results in just a minute. First, let's... uh, Let me share with you a few of our text messages. Tony writes, Joey, if you agree with Democrat policy, then stop calling yourself a Christian because they are not believers of my God. Uh, Tony, uh, you I think you've probably seen this Pew research I'm about to share with you. Uh, And and Tony's right. It's terribly frustrating to have someone like Kamala Harris. Who likes to kill babies, who does not respect life but yet you have evangelicals for harris you have christians for harris uh if you missed friday's show go back and listen you can listen on the odyssey app you can also check it out on my podcast just search for joey hudson just the truth wherever you listen to podcast and listen to to the to the two minute or so video that i shared with you from matt walsh who talks about the fact that Uh, you are morally obligated to support Donald Trump if you are a Christian. From the mere mere standpoint that Kamala Harris kills babies, she she believes that a woman should have the choice to abort a baby at any time. Appreciate your text, uh, Tony. Gene writes, Joey, Kamala grew up in a Marxist home. I read this on the Internet under her parents' bio. Look, she's she is so far left. It's it's just uh, it's scary to think that she has that she's vice president of the United States. We just need to pray that Joe Biden lives through his term because we certainly don't want something to happen to him. And she assumed the role of president. Uh, Albert writes, I've seen several Harris political ads where there are long lines of people waiting in front of food banks for handouts. In order to make them feel better, she's wanting to hang signs at these food banks, which read joy. Don't her messages realize or messengers realize that they're that her party policies have put these people in the food bank lines. I'll take jobs over handouts anytime. You know what, Albert, you would think that would be just pretty simple. Unfortunately, they don't. They don't realize that the the very person who's offering them handouts. And yes, th- this whole theme of joy is, is something new. That, that Kamala Harris is rolling out. We'll be hearing a lot of it during this week at the Democrat National Convention. But no, they don't understand that, Albert. They don't understand that when you dump trillions of dollars into the economy, it causes high inflation. It causes prices to go through the roof. It causes businesses to uh, have to pay higher interest rates. 
causes some businesses to literally go out of uh, out of business and it causes a loss of jobs. Mike writes, uh, Joe, in regards to the twenty five thousand uh, down payment that the government wants to make on first time home buyers, what happens if they don't make their house payments and the house gets repoed? Does that house become the government's house? Something is not right with this. It's going to be another 2008 housing crisis cost people because people can't afford their homes. The people that gets this money for that down payment are the people that probably should never own a home. Bingo, Mike, you're so right. Some people are not meant to be homeowners. Some people are better off renting so that they can call the landlord when there's a, a, a leak in the roof, so that they can call the landlord when the HVAC goes out. I mentioned to you in a, a, a previous show some work that I did with a nonprofit developer who were doing it for the right reasons, but they, they kind of proved the point that some people just shouldn't own a home because they don't have the discipline, don't have the ability in some cases to save, to have a maintenance reserve, to save some money, put some money to the side in case that roof does leak or when the HVAC has to be replaced because eventually it's going to have to be replaced. Texter says, Joey, well, I spent much time trying to convince a young lady the importance of voting for Trump. She told me in no uncertain terms that she was not voting for him and that was her right. Well, it, it is her right for sure. Um, Texter says, this young lady is old enough to know better than this, but you know, she seemed to have no fear of socialism. What on earth can we do? There are many with her warped mentality, and yet they claim to be Christians. We have to just keep educating. Just keep trying. Just keep trying. That's all we can do. So the Pew Research uh, Center did an extensive study on what relationship there is between our religious affiliation and our party affiliation. Some interesting things. It, the, the study is too in depth for me to share all of it with you. But basically, in summary, Protestants mostly align with the Republican Party. Protestants remain the largest single religious group in the U.S. Thank goodness, as they have for almost fit the last fifteen years. A majority of Protestants, fifty nine percent, register as a Republican or vote as a Republican. Though as recently as 2009, according to Pew, they were split nearly equally between the two parties. So since 2009, we have seen the number of Christians in a Protestant faith who have registered or vote Republican. Uh, Partisan identity among Catholics have been closely divided, according to Pew, but the GOP now has a modest advantage among Catholics. About half of Catholic voters identify as Republicans or lean towards the Republican Party, compared with 44 percent who identify as Democrats or lean towards the Democrat Party. Uh, Members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints remain overwhelmingly Republican. Three quarters of voters in this group, widely known as Mormons, identify as Republicans or lean Republicans with only about a quarter, 23 percent, who associate with the Democrat Party. Jewish voters continue to mostly align with the Democrats. About 7 in 10 Jewish voters, 69 percent, according to Pew, associate with the Democrat Party, while 29 percent affiliate with the Republican Party. Now, why is that? That, That's one, and and I've known this, didn't know the latest numbers, but why is it that Jewish people support the Democrat Party when the Democrat Party are the first ones to, to turn their back on Israel? Does that make sense to you? Can, can, if you are of the Jewish faith and you're listening today, I'd love for you to email me, joey at joeyhudson.com, and explain this one to me. I, I just want to understand it because I don't get it. I don't know how any Jew could support the Democrat Party when you have their soon-to-be nominee who is somewhat siding with the Palestinians. I mean, she continues to say that she supports uh, Israel, but yet she's very clear that she thinks there's to be a ceasefire, regardless of where Israel is within this conflict with, uh, with the Hamas and the terrorists. So, so why would any Jew 
want to support the Democrats? Some, somebody answer that for me. Joe at joeyhudson.com. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Just click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails and the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Be sure and like, subscribe, uh, follow me on my YouTube channel. Just search for Joey Hudson. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Be sure and forward this edition of Just the Truth to some friends. Just click on the share button. Send it to a few of your contacts because if we're going to build our community and if we're going to win in November, we got to build an army of conservatives. The way we beat Joe Biden is through educating people and no better way than encouraging them to listen to just the truth. Hey, keep those comments coming via the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Your emails always welcome as well. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Don't forget to take advantage of the My Pillow special, $25 for the My Towels six-piece towel set when you use promo code Joey. Just go to mypillow.com. Always use promo code Joey. We're back again tomorrow. Hope you will be too. Remember, God's got this. He's still in control.